All right. In this video, we're going to talk about style and how to go about learning how to do style. Um, this isn't about drawing this, drawing anything in your style. This is about learning someone else's style to learn kind of what the elements of style are. Um, style is a choice of how you use basic fundamental tools. And over here on the left, we've got a sort of a style reference, uh, which is a illustration by Mike Mignola, uh, the artist who did Hellboy. And what we're going to try to do is use the similar the the tools of drawing in a similar way. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close. But we want to create our own. Uh, we want to create our own illustration using our uh, reference material that's different. So we're not just copying the the drawing. What we're doing is we're creating an original piece of work in the, in the way that someone else would sort of do it. And what you'll notice about the style is that it's got a strong sense of the noton or the light dark difference. And what I'm doing here is looking for the shadow areas in the reference photo, which is from earthsworld.com, which you should definitely go check out. Um, and what the first step to do here is to sort of judge the shapes. And you'll notice that in the Mignola style, there aren't that many curves. There are sort of mostly straight lines that have sharp edges. And so that's what we try to do to help imitate this particular style. And we're going to progress in a few layers. The first layer is to do an all black straight layer with a very sharp edge. And what you'll notice about Mike Mignola's work is that there's no, there aren't any really soft edges at all anywhere. It's uh, kind of this comic noir style. And, you know, in selecting a reference to imitate, it's good to have one with very strong lighting. If you had a reference that were more um, ambient or soft lighting, it would be tougher to, to get the style because the shadows wouldn't be clear. So you'd have to bring more from your own imagination and knowledge. But here, since it's very obvious, we have a very clear light direction. Um, it'll be easier to approach because we can see clear shadow shapes everywhere. And what we need to do is take these shadow shapes and change them to be more Mike Mignola-ish by using sharp and clear lines and using a lot of straight lines to get them. So if you need work on just general anatomy, like if you choose to do something that's figurative, um, that's definitely an option. You know, I, I think it's good to use these opportunities to do a quick refresher or an intro on how to get the anatomy correct. But the main thing here is to judge shapes and judging individual shapes and relationships with shapes isn't exclusive to anatomy. So you could do um, a landscape in the style of Mike Mignola or objects in the style um, using a, a style reference that's a figure because really all you're trying to keep in common is a little bit of the shape language and the way that the layers stack up. So one of the other things too about the, the style that Mike Mignola has developed is that it's, it's relatively clean there aren't a lot of search lines or um, or scratching lines. So, I mean, that's not necessarily the way I work, which, so this was, this is actually really tough, a style assignment for me because I want to leave, I want to be loose. I want to leave lines rough. So here I'm having to go back and erase areas and clean it up a little more than I would like to. I think, um, I tend to get impatient once things are kind of established. I like to just move on to the next kind of thing and not really worry too much about the uh, the history of mark making that's there. But 
you know, this is why you do style exercises because it forces you to break out of your sort of default patterns. And when you're stuck doing the same kind of thing over and over again, I think this is a great exercise to come back to because it's forcing you to get things together and work in ways that you're uncomfortable with. You could use a variety of tools to, to do this. Like you could use the lasso bucket method, which is probably a better way to do it than a brush tool because you'd be filling areas more accurately. I prefer more organic methods anyway, um, because I want things to look a little more nuanced, but, um, you know, that's just me. And do, if I, if I were doing this as like a full assignment, what I would do is do the same image. Um, and I would make like three or four attempts at it, trying to get closer and closer to the style in this demo. I'm only going to do this one time and I'm going to switch to a different artist style and it's going to be close, but it's not going to be as exact as I would want it to be. And I think that there's room for improvements even after uh, this is all said and done. What's convenient about the reference photo is it has a really strong sense of reflected light. And it's easy to pick up on that and refine that. One of the things that you want to do um, if you're going with this kind of style or really any kind of style is work in, work in layers that you can change. So here I'm using uh, basically flat shapes of different colors and I want each color to be a new layer or at least where they don't overlap, like, you know, they can have, they can have the same layer, but, um, using the layering properly, I think is really important. If I work all on one layer, then I can't go back and make changes as easily and it could get really messy really quickly. The other thing too, is I can use automated, autom automated color adjustments this way so I can, um, change colors without having to do random bucket fills or anything like that. Um, I want to keep colors, the number of colors to a minimum and keep the color kind of desaturated to kind of stick close to the reference. So now I've established the eyes in a reflected light area. So I can go put a layer under everything and get a skin tone pretty quickly. And I can just scrub that in without changing any of the line work by using an under layer. And for the hat, I think the hat's kind of a uh, orangey color, so, but it's really desaturated and really pale. So I have to come back with a, a very orange, a pale orange color for that. Now that the hat's pretty established, uh, we can move on. The garment's kind of this blue green, um, but I still want to keep it relatively desaturated. This is going to change the color scheme too, to kind of be a little bit somewhere between a discord and a complementary color. Um, so now we're getting into this idea that there might be an actual color scheme. Um, and then we have to think about a color scheme as well. So, this gives us kind of more or less a complete first pass at this. And here, what I wanted to do is do some color, color adjustments to kind of make the piece a little bit better and bring the colors a little closer together. Um, use different reflected light colors and just kind of make sure everything works together really well. I think um, the advantage of working these layers and doing these adjustments to me is huge. So if you can't quite tell because it's too desaturated what the hue is, what you can do in the adjustment is turn the saturation all up uh, very high. Pick the hue that you want and then desaturate it to the level that you want. Um, 
And if ultimately you don't like it, that's okay. And you can keep playing and keep adjusting until you get something that you that you like. I think if I were to refine that, I would make the reflected light smaller overall and erase back into it and have more of the dark areas just be just be like pure black because um, a lot of that's just not necessary to define the the features and then I think I would spend probably like if I were really working on this I'd probably spend an hour just cleaning up the the black line work and making sure that it's all very precise and detailed just like Maniola does it in his particular style um, now, what makes this exercise really interesting is what you do is you take the same subject, you can draw it just to draw it for yourself, and then you pick a different style reference and try to do it in the style of somebody else entirely. And when you're picking styles, it could be anything. Like, I've chosen a couple of entertainment industry styles here, and uh, to me, that's pretty fun. You know, I think you can do a great number of these um, these sorts of things because, you know, it's really, really unlimited the number of styles you can go through. Like, you could pick styles out of art history and um, you could pick, like say impressionism or post-impressionism you could pick you could do a portrait in the style of vincent van gogh you could do portraits in a highly rendered classical style it doesn't matter what matters is that you take on stylistic challenges that you've never tried before and when you start to get into cartoonists you know, this is about as far away from my particular training uh, as it can get. So for me, this is really, really out of my comfort zone. And so I have to really think and really analyze, like, you know, what are they eliminating? Like, how are they distorting the proportions? Like, what are the little rules that they've come up with? Like, in this particular, uh, in this particular style reference, we're looking at a... Uh, 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 cartoonist um, uh, with uh, by the name of Grangel and um, you know I'm not even really necessarily familiar with their work um, all I have is the drawings uh, a few drawings collected but what I notice is they have small ears done with a basic ear shape and you kind of see the top of the top and the inner ear there's not a lot of detail there all the eyes tend to be pretty round um, Sometimes if they change expression, it's done with the, with eyebrows. Other times, the top of the eye will get a little bit um, changed. The features get exaggerated. The head shape is not particularly anatomical. Facial hair is bigger and exaggerated. So, um, and then there's a relationship of the garment to the actual anatomy. So what I thought might be worth doing here is exaggerating the mustache size and making that uh, the feature that gets really exaggerated. Big nose, big mustache. And I noticed that the edge is a little rough sometimes on the hair. So I wanted to go back and, and work on that. I think um, there could be a little less emphasis on the nose that I, than what I've done. Um, I think the mustache would cover up the lips, so you wouldn't even see the lips unless the character were talking. Um, so here it's more about minimizing that ear down to like basically three lines. And again, I want to include a little bit more information about the character. Um, so I thought to unify this conceptually, like bringing in some hair that has the same sort of feel of the mustache would be really fun and then doing like a hat that doesn't quite fit the head that could be that would be pretty fun too so making the hat a little smaller so that it gets a little distorted um but you know plausible that it would fit on a funky shaped head 
And then, you know, making a really skinny neck and a garment that goes way out around the neck. Uh, I thought that'd be interesting too. Um, and the eyes need a little bit of work, I think. A little bit less emphasis um, or a changed emphasis. And then in terms of shadows, there's not a lot of like lighting going on with these characters, but there is the suggestion that areas are darker. So, you know, I wanted to run along with maybe a little bit of a highlight color in certain areas, change the eye shape to be a little more, um, have a little more attitude that fits the reference a little bit better. And then you notice that the original ref, uh, style reference has some white areas and some bluish gray areas. So I thought it would be worth it to include some of those tones in here. And then there's a lot of m form following marks where the um, black areas follow the forms that it's describing. I'm not just a matter of emphasizing certain areas, emphasizing certain features. So here I'm emphasizing the, the sort of T-zone of the face on the brow ridge and eyebrows, and then using a little bit of that cool gray color to sink some of the anatomy down and create a little bit of depth within the, the head. You know, this one's a really tough one because it's um, sometimes it's hard to pick, you know, one single area to emphasize. You know, I think the uh, and it's tough to minimize in the way cartoonists tend to minimize because they can do 10 things with one line. And so that's why I love copying cartoonists because they're so efficient and they can teach you a lot about sort of the bare minimum of what it takes to get a drawing to come across to people. And to me, that's really an, a fascinating subject because you're talking about, you know, achieving a large effect without a lot of work. And I always enjoy methods that allow that to happen. So I hope you've watched uh, this and enjoyed it. And, um, of course, let me know if you have questions and try this out for yourself. You know, pick some artists that you, some successful artists that you like and try to imitate their style using the same subject across different styles. And um, let me know how those results go.